Scheduled for 15 rounds between the champion, Marvin Johnson, and the challenger who is from Trinidad, Leslie Stewart. It's a rematch of a fight held in Indianapolis 15 months ago. Johnson won on a seventh round TKO. The fight stopped by cuts. Now, today it is Leslie Stewart out of Indianapolis and home. Here in Port of Spain, he was born in Trinidad, and he will try to win the WBA light heavyweight crown from a man who has to go on the road all the way to Trinidad from Indianapolis, and I suppose it's an appropriate weekend to feature a man from Indy because tomorrow, one of the classic American sports events, the Indian And whoever wear that crown, Mike Tyson, looks back at the great heavyweights of the past. Hey, the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship is on the line. Challenger Leslie Stewart takes on the title holder, Marvin Johnson. The site, Port of Spain, Trinidad. Al Michaels is standing by live there now for a preview. Al? Well, Becky, one of the big stories in Port of Spain at the moment is the weather. We've had some intermittent downpours. We still have a big crowd looking on. They were hopeful of uh, putting about 30,000 into the National Sports Stadium. I think we have a little bit less than that. The ring is protected, but the uh, crowd is not. So it will be an interesting afternoon in this fight, which is scheduled for 15 rounds for the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Leslie Stewart out of Trinidad. He was born here, spent part of his childhood in England, and then came back against Marvin Johnson from Indianapolis. As usual, our expert analyst is Alex Wallow. And Alex, the one thing we know we can count on today is an exciting fight from Marvin Johnson because he seems to give us one every time he goes to the ring. Al, I think you could make a case that Marvin Johnson has been the most consistently exciting fighter in boxing in recent years. He may not have the technique and the skills that we associate with a champion, but he has a champion's heart and a champion's will. Today's fight is the biggest payday of his career, $212,000. And he makes no secret about the fact that he's no longer in it for titles. He's no longer in it for uh, title defenses or running up records. He just wants the money. He wants to provide financial security for him and his family. And he knows that in order to stay in line for the big payday against a, a Hearns or a Bobby Chez, he must win here today. For Leslie Stewart, as you said at the top, it's the second time around. He is quite frank about admitting that he had the jitters in that first championship fight and he says with the experience of that fight under his belt he's ready to win the wba world lightweight championship light heavyweight championship two interesting backgrounds so let's take a look at the combatants johnson facing stewart today as we look at the two men's careers in retrospect marvin johnson first captured a light heavyweight title in 1978 when he stopped monte marlock with the wbc version of the crown but he lost it in his first defense to Matthew Saad Muhammad, then known as Matthew Franklin. He rebounded a year later to win the WBA title when he stopped champion Victor Galendez here in round 11. But again, he lost the belt in his first defense. And most people thought he was at the end of the road in 1981 when then light heavyweight contender Michael Spinks finished him in round four with that punch. Meanwhile, a young man from Trinidad fought his way to the top of the division. Leslie Stewart was undefeated in 18 fights, including this eight-round stoppage of American Mark Frazee. Then he stepped into the ring in February of 86 to try to win the vacant WBA title, and his opponent was Marvin Johnson, who had won 14 straight after the Sphinx fight. As is his custom, Johnson came out aggressively and kept the Trinidadian off balance and retreating. As the fight wore on, though, Stewart's youth and persistence served him well as he was able to back Johnson up with sharp counters of his own. But here in round seven, cuts next to both eyes caused the bout to be stopped, giving Johnson his unprecedented third light heavyweight crown. This time, there was to be no first defense jinx, as Johnson battered game challenger Jean-Marie Amidi last September and halted him on cuts in the 13th round. Meanwhile, Stewart was doing a lot of fighting of his own, winning five straight and capturing the Latin American title with his fourth round TKO over fully Oval Mejias in November to regain the top contender's spot and give him another shot at the WBA title, this time in Port of Spain. Okay, so we're just minutes away now from the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship from Port of Spain, Trinidad. We'll be back shortly, but right now to New York and Becky Dixon. And we're back live now. Al Michaels along with Alex Wallow in Port of Spain, the largest city and the capital of Trinidad and Tobago. Not far from the South American coast and not that far from 
Venezuela. And this man, Leslie Stewart, at the age of 26. He has lost just once. He is the WBA's number one ranked light heavyweight, has already fought for the title. We documented and chronicled that. Under far different circumstances, though, that was at Market Square Arena in Indianapolis, Marvin Johnson's hometown. And here they are already thinking about a possible confrontation with Thomas Hearns for their man, who I suspect, Alex, might even be a slight favorite in this one. Even though Johnson is the champion, the prevailing feeling is that Leslie Stewart will win this fight. Al, the feeling in Las Vegas is that uh, he will. He's a 7-5 to five favorite. That's a very small favorite. I think it's based on two things. One, the crowd, and two, the weather. As Marvin Johnson, the champion, comes in the ring, they feel that both those factors are in Leslie Stewart's favor. I don't think the crowd will have a negative effect on Marvin Johnson. He really just goes out and does his job, no matter whether the crowd is for him or against him. He doesn't hear the crowd. The question will be what effect it will have on Leslie Stewart. Will it uplift him? Will it inspire him? Or will it put so much pressure on him that he's not able to perform up to his capabilities? Another thing to keep in mind, too, Johnson, 33 years old. It's the first time he's fought outdoors. It is hot, but not as hot as it could be if the sun had been out all day long. We've been soaked from time to time with heavy downpours, so the temperature is only, I would estimate, in the mid-80s right now, but it is extremely humid in Port of Spain. Let's get ready to rumble! This is the main event of the afternoon, scheduled for 15 rounds for the light heavyweight championship of the world. The referee for this bout is Bernie Soto of Miami, Florida. And now introducing first, in the blue corner, he's wearing the black trunks with red trim. He weighs 175 pounds. His professional record, 23 victories, only one defeat, 15 by KO. He's the current Commonwealth champion, and he's the number one challenger in the world, formerly from Levantil, now fighting out of Port of Spain, Trinidad. He's the number one challenger in the world, Leslie Tiger And in the red corner, Wearing white trunks with lavender trim, also weighing 175 pounds from Indianapolis, Indiana in the United States. One of the best professional records going, 43 victories, only five defeats, 35 KOs. He's a three-time world champion, the current light heavyweight champion of the world, Marvin Pop Johnson. are from Panama, Venezuela, and Puerto Rico. There is the tail of the tape. Stewart this morning weighed in at 177 and a half, so he had to shed two and a half pounds between the time of the weigh-in, originally at 7 o'clock in the morning, and by the time he was able to get down to the limit. So here we go, scheduled for 15, though it would be shocking if it went that far. And Johnson, per usual, out aggressively and swarmingly. And backed up by Stewart and Hurt. But Stewart countering. Unlike the Indianapolis fight where it was all Johnson in round one, Stewart ready for him, countering, caught right hand. Johnson seeking and probing and walking in the punch after punch from Stewart, who is up for Marvin is in some danger here in the first round already. Marvin Johnson's style has never changed. He comes out and throws punches right from the opening belt, and this time Leslie Stewart was ready. And the assault from Stewart. Johnson, and he has to watch that head, or Stewart really does too, 
because it was Stewart who felt that butts led to the cuts, which cost Stewart the last fight. And also in the last fight, Al, Leslie Stewart let Marvin off the hook in the third round when he had him hurt. He said he would not do that this time. When he got Marvin hurt, when Marvin got tired, he was going to jump right on him. And that is what he is doing and has done throughout the first round. Johnson appearing slightly wobbly. Leslie looking to pick his shots. He's not letting his hands go the way you might expect him to do. You notice Marvin Johnson has no ability to hold. He doesn't know how to survive in this situation, how to clinch. And he just took a good left followed by a right and he's trying to clinch. He's trying to hold on. Warning from the referee Bernie Soto. The exact antithesis of their first fight in Indianapolis when Johnson dominated and controlled and took Stewart up in round one. Good right, followed by a left. And again, Johnson very wobbly. Johnson taking a lot of punishment, nearly going down. His knees beginning to buckle. And the totally on the saw from Stewart. And totally unable to hold on, Al. He doesn't know how to flinch. And he can't get his hands up. Down he goes. The ring is also slippery because of the rain. Down he goes on a wet spot, but he was going down anyway. He takes the mandatory eight. Referee, the three knockdown rule is in effect. If he goes down three times, this one is over. Half a minute to go in round one. series of punches that land will put Marvin down again and there he goes. He goes down here. If he goes down again before the round is over, it is over. As the first round comes to an end, all Stewart right from the outset, right from the opening bell, Leslie Stewart assumes command and wins the round handily and nearly knocks him out. That has to be a 10-7 round, Al. I thought the referee, Bernie Soto, made two mistakes there. Number one, I thought it was a slip. I thought Marvin was hit, but he, I thought he went down because he found a wet spot in the ring and went down after the punch and went down as a result of the wet spot in the ring, as you said. Secondly, Leslie Stewart went to his own corner. He did not go to a neutral corner, and the referee did not wave him over to a neutral corner before he began his count. Let's pick up the action here at the top of the round, right from the opening bell. Marvin Johnson right in his face, but there, with that series of punches, Leslie Stewart wobbled his man, good right hand, and continued the rain away. punches on Marvin Johnson. I don't know how much of his leg's inability to keep him up there, Al, is a function of the ring mat, and how much is a function of, the, of, his, of uh, his own legs being uh, knocked silly by the punches of Stewart. Start of round two. And again, it's the furious assault of Stewart, who, as Alex mentioned, was man in himself after the Indianapolis fight. He appeared to be assuming command in the third round, did not follow up, and eventually lost because of the cuts, even though he was behind on the cards of all three judges. The one difference between the first fight is that this time, Leslie Stewart was not distracted by the hoopla of a championship fight. He was ready at the opening bell, and he met Johnson. In big trouble, down twice in the first round. In big trouble in a lot of ways, too, because his stamina has been questioned in the past. And this one's scheduled for 15, and normally it's Johnson who gets off to the accelerated start. And the good start, and wins his fights early. Here again, Leslie Stewart making the mistake he made in the first fight, laying on the ropes. He isn't gonna score, he can't score countering off the ropes. He likes to do that, but it gives Johnson too much punching uh, opportunity. Johnson slightly rubbery legged again here in round two. Another good right hand. Johnson has a ton of problems here. He's got Stewart moving, not giving him a target. And he's got every time he does set his feet to throw punches, Stewart's letting his hands go and catching with hard, damaging punches. Stewart working on the body. Johnson with a decent left uppercut, the resilient one, the resourceful Marvin Johnson, the left-hander at the age of 33. 
mounting his own attack here in round two and backing Stewart up. Behind us, Jay Russell Pelts, the promoter associated with the champion Marvin Johnson, yelling forward, Marvin, get off, get off. Marvin Johnson must get come forward. Off, he off. cannot fight at all backing up. And he's trying to do just what Russell says. Nothing on that punch, just arm punches at this point. Johnson noted for a great left hand and not much of a right jab, more of a probing right jab than anything. Leslie Stewart has thrown a number of low, low blows and landed him on Marvin Johnson. Has not yet been warned by the referee. Marvin is just not getting off. And there's a cut now that's open outside the left eye of Leslie Stewart. And it may be the same cut for the first fight, Al. Leslie said he learned his lesson from the first fight. He wasn't going to get his head in range of Marvin's head, which did all the damage, I felt, in the two cuts that were open in the first fight. But in his anx anxiousness to knock out Marvin, he's let it happen. So the cut was coming now from the outside of Stewart's left eye in the second round climax. Live from Trinidad, the first time ABC's Wide World of Sports has come to you from the Caribbean island nation. It is Leslie Stewart on the right. The challenger, Marvin Johnson in the white truck from Indianapolis on the left for the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship, round three. If you're just joining us, Johnson was on the canvas twice in round one. Fought back, tried to be aggressive in round two, was rubbery legged for a moment, but was able to withstand the pressure and has begun to assert a little bit of command, or at least he's attempting to in round three, though Stewart is counterpunching very effectively. Another difference from the first fight, Al, is the fact that Leslie Stewart has an outstanding cut man in his corner, Eddie Eliano out of Philadelphia. He has a new trainer, Sam Solomon, and a new cut man. Those cuts he had in the first fight were not particularly bad, but the trainer in his corner then couldn't stop him. Now he's got a man who can do the job. If Leslie helps him by not getting his head in there in contact with Marvin. If you're hearing, by the way, what you think is a percussion instrument in your backyard, it's coming from the rear of the stadium here in Port of Spain, in Trinidad, where the steel drum was invented. And Johnson right there being cautioned about using his head. You see the effect of those punches that they landed on Mark, Marvin Johnson in the first two rounds. He just is not getting off with any kind of power. Stewart slipping a little bit there on the ropes. Good left off the ropes by Stewart. I'd like to alert our local stations along the line. We'll take a station break at the end of this round. The third in Port of Spain. Johnson momentarily losing his balance and regaining it. But taking some punishment here. The cut, meanwhile, has not reopened. They were able to close the cut, and now it begins to slightly reopen on the left eye of Leslie Stewart. But it's not bleeding particularly much, Al. It's not getting into the eye. It's not obscuring the vision. It's not a problem at this point. But Leslie can't keep his head in there like that with more than expected to stay close. And Johnson, the wily veteran, of course, is trying to exploit that. That could be a tremendous advantage. That could, that could mean the fight for him at this point. Wobbling on his legs again, but Leslie is not really opening up. He's pacing himself. That's something Marvin Johnson's never done in his entire career. But he might be forced into that today because of right, the early step turn back. of events. Ten seconds to go in round three. And we'll return to Port of Spain, Trinidad after this word from your local station. Fourth round now. The ring is slippery. It's protected by a canvas, but there are leaks. If you join us late, Marvin Johnson in the white trunks, defending his crown, down twice in the first round. And what Alex said might be a 10-7 and certainly a 10-8 round, but fighting back and trying to be the aggressor here at the outset of round four, missing with that wild left follow by the right. Low blow, marginal low blow by Stewart. Good uppercut in return by Marvin Johnson, and another one. Another one by Marvin Johnson. Johnson, that flicking, probing jab, but it's the left that does all of the damage from Marvin Johnson. Okay, 
who has held on three separate occasions a light heavyweight championship, currently in defense of his WBA crown. Marvin Johnson out of Indianapolis, where, of course, tomorrow the Indy 500 comes your way on ABC with live coverage beginning tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 in the morning on the Pacific Coast. The Indy 500 live tomorrow. Marvin Johnson with great heart, fighting back, Withstanding two knockdowns in round. I don't care what happens, Alex. The rest of this fight, Marvin Johnson has done a tremendous amount of heart, courage, guts, whatever you want to call it, to hang in there and absorb the punishment he has and make a fight out of this. Right now you see Leslie Stewart shouting at Marvin Johnson to come on. He doesn't have to worry about that. Marvin Johnson only knows how to come on. I think Leslie Stewart has let this crowd affect him a little bit and get him out of his fight plan a little bit. He's still in control of the fight. He still has landed the more damaging punches. He still has to be ahead, but he's not boxing. He's not moving. It's possible that he's also is you know tired and uh, had some uh, bad effects from Marvin Johnson's punches and just can't move. He has to fight him and doing a good job of the right here. Two good right hands. And now the flicking left, looking for the right hand opening is Leslie Stewart as Johnson pins him in the corner. You know, the referee just stepped in and broke those two fighters when Marvin Johnson was throwing a punch. If one fighter has a hand free and is punching, the fighters should not be separated. Watch it! Of course, the referee, Bernie Soto, only knew he'd be refereeing this bout a few hours ago. There has been a major controversy involving the officials. They've been changing the officials, and in fact, the referee, on 10 minutes' notice, it seems. Johnson again in trouble. Stewart trying to follow up. There is just nothing but guts and conditioning holding Marvin Johnson up right now, Al. And at the age of 33, and that's oddly the one thing that's always been questioned about Marvin Johnson, stamina, staying power. But here he is absorbing all of this punishment and two knockdowns. You know, you know, it's an amazing thing. Both fighters have been holding with one hand and punching with the other. There's no question that Marvin Johnson just did it there. But Leslie Stewart has done it at least twice this round also and was never worn by Bernie Soto. In the heat and humidity of Port of Spain, Trinidad. Here is the end of round. 
the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship from Trinidad, round six. With Marvin Johnson. Backing Leslie Stewart up. And Stewart coming off the rope. With a scheduled 15 rounder. And again, Stewart at least in Vegas, a slight favorite despite being the challenger. Marvin Johnson down twice in the first round. But hanging in, more than hanging in, making a fight of it. So it was Alex Mitchell. It would be Stewart who would be ahead. You have to figure on all the cards right now. He's making the fight, or more of the fight anyway. It's possible that Leslie's more tired than he looks. He just allows Marvin in the opening seconds of here in the sixth round to throw punches without firing back at all himself. Maybe just waiting for Marvin to tire himself out and then come out with punches of his own. Punch. That right hand of the body hurt Marvin again. Now he's just arm punching. He's not getting his legs and his body into the punches when he stands straight up like that. And that happens to Marvin when he's fatigued. And Marvin is fatigued. at least the first See, half the of the round. Sorry, uh, the referee just broke and you clearly saw Leslie Stewart's hand hooked around Marvin Johnson. Marvin Johnson was throwing punches. That was a case where Stewart should have been warned for holding. <laughs> Stewart again working underneath and working effectively underneath. You saw Leslie Stewart strike there. He pushed Marvin Johnson back by putting both hands and both gloves on his shoulders and, and let, giving him a shove. Not many people have been able to push Marvin back that easily. Not many people have had him this hurt and tired. And it was that way at the outset. The late team is in. Johnson down twice in the first round. A curious first round of soul from Leslie Stewart. Step back. We're at the sixth round. Referee breaks him. And Marvin Johnson put a hand out to steady himself on, on the ropes. His left hand. That's how tired he is right now. and with more power. Marvin can't stand there and let Leslie throw punches. He has to let his hands go. And he ends the sixth with a good assault. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Take some of it. Little, little as bit Marvin out. Johnson's okay. wife, okay. Dolores, okay. mother of four, looks on here in Trinidad. Her man, through sheer guts alone, hanging in there. He's lasted five and a half rounds longer than I thought he'd last in the middle of round one when he was down twice and appeared to be in severe trouble. Here we go into round seven, but it's still Leslie Stewart, the challenger, making the fight. Oh, two damaging blows to the body again. And nothing from referee Bernie Soto. Marvin doubling over. I think Alex cut in the mouth. They're both, you see blood in both their mouthpieces. And then cut that opened up early on outside the left eye of Leslie Stewart. They have done good work on it. Eddie Aliano is working on the cuts there. And a significant difference between here and Indianapolis with two cuts, four stoppage in the fight. Okay, that's enough. But see, now that's wrong. There was no clinch there. There were two fighters standing there throwing punches. They paused in throwing their punches, but they hadn't clinched. And the referee should let him work. Well, at least he's been consistent. Again, to the beat of the steel drum, Leslie Stewart trying to bring a championship to the island nation of Trinidad and Tobago. Right, exactly. Humidity is stifling. Humidity is St. Louis in July. Arthur Johnson 
told us before the fight he was very concerned about it. A good right hand. And I think it's been those right hands have been more of a factor than the heat, and Marvin is ready to go. And he was holding on with his left hand. He's in big trouble again here in round seven. Another furious assault and attack unleashed, but look at the way Johnson is able to at least attempt to counter back. And just keeping Bernie Soto, the referee, from stopping the fight. He can stop at any moment. Johnson still attempting to come forward, taking all of this punishment here in round seven. All the heart in the world has Marvin Johnson. And there's another breakage. That time it did Marvin a favor. It did. Round seven, crowd going wild. And what more can you say about Marvin Johnson, who through seven rounds has taken tremendous punishment, but he's still on his feet as we await the bell. Round eight now from Trinidad. Marvin Johnson, all guts, hanging in, absorbing brutal punishment. Leslie Stewart trying to win Johnson's WBA title. Both fighters, their mouths bloody, and again that cut. And they've done a decent job, okay, a more back, than back, decent back, job, outside the left back, eye back. of Leslie Stewart, a cut that opened up in the third round. So it was quickly packed. Johnson slips down. I believe that's water from the corner of Leslie Stewart that they've used to try to revive their man in the corner, and that's not the result of the rain we've had. It doesn't make any difference. It's very dangerous to both fighters. Mm -hmm. No knockdown. <laughs> Two knockdowns in the fight, both in the first round when Johnson went to the canvas. Marvin trying to cover up here at the outset of round eight, and again, it's Stewart with the assault. got to stop this fight soon, Al. You want to give a champion every chance you can, but they have to stop this fight soon unless Marvin gets on top and gets back into the fight. He's just taking too many clean shots. Up. And he has since the outset. The fighters who get hurt in the ring are the brave fighters. The fighters who stand up and hard to touch, they're the ones who get hurt. And it's up to the referee in their corners not to allow that to happen. Sometimes you need some encouragement from the corner. Because can't the referee be sort of swayed by the determination shown by a fighter? Well, I can tell you this. Champ Cheney, who has a deep, deep relationship with Marvin Johnson, has the towel in his hand. He's sitting with Marvin's brother, Hank Johnson. And they're looking at the fight, and I believe Champ Cheney will throw the towel in. Even though it's not allowed a championship fight, he'll throw that towel in if his man gets in trouble again in this round or in the rest of the fight. For our local stations, you'll have a break coming at the end of this round. Eighth round action. Johnson still moving forward, but absorbing all of the punishment underneath the uppercutting from Leslie Stewart. in this fight getting into this round. Fifteen seconds remaining in round eight. Marvin Johnson still hanging in. And we'll return to Port of Spain, Trinidad after this from your local station. in the way of courage and all of the rest but enough was enough and there was little doubt that it was Stewart dominating the fight and the referee and we think wisely so decided that that should be it Marvin Johnson had nothing more to prove he proved plenty today by hanging in a lot longer than anybody had any reason to expect and he relinquishes his
Fort Lauderdale, Florida as well, but he is back in what truly is home, and he has done it before the home folks. Come on, let's bring him in. Alex Lalo attempting to make his way through that mob scene in Port of Spain. Into the ring. And hopefully and eventually we will have a word with the new champion. But it will be, as you can see, at least a minute or two. Mike that's working, okay? How you feel? Leslie, last year, February of 1986, after you lost to Marvin Johnson, you promised that, that you would be back, and today you fulfilled that promise. Sure did, man. I fulfilled it. I proved it. My fans here on the floor, wherever they may be. Leslie, I thought the fight was decided in the first 30 seconds when you hurt Ladies him early, and, and then just, just kept him hurt throughout most of the fight. Of all time. Yeah, I did. Marvin Johnson. Just like, just like the Rex and Rupert, you fight. But, you know, Marvin is a great man, a strong man, good endurance, a good son, and he proved it today, you know. Um, I had him hurt, and he showed my shoulder. I've got work to do. I know I've got work to do. And believe me, I'm going to work. I'm going to improve myself, and uh, if Mark wants a rematch, I'll give it to him. Leslie, how tired were you? I'll be honest, I felt a little tired. I don't know why, maybe because of the heat. First time in this, fighting in this heat. I don't know, maybe, I don't know, I don't know what round it was. I was just, <laughs> I, I was trying to pace myself. The last, the last three rounds, I tried to pace myself. And it worked. Marvin was exhausted. I was exhausted. But I know I had some results. Leslie, were you amazed that he stood up to the punches you hit him with? Yeah, I was amazed because I was connected. I was connected. I thought I was connected. And it got to me. It started wearing me down. I'm not trying to go to the body. Take my time. Don't be anxious. That's what I did the last four rounds. Took my time. And somehow I knew I was going to get that right hand, that left hook, and that uppercut. And uh, I was exhausted too. Very exhausted. Because we saw never complain we were to stop it. I sat in a stool for a minute. And that's for my endurance and my work rate. Presley, congratulations to you. Thank, I want to thank ABC for giving me this opportunity. And I hope they'll have me back again. I want to hear to all my fans in America. Whoever this, 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 this sort of fight. And I hope they love it. And I hope they want me back again. So I'm going to be a champion. I've been defending the title once. And I'm going to take I want to fight I want every opportunity I get. I'm going to fight. Port of Spain, Trinidad, they will be banging those steel drums and oil can tops and all like instruments, I'm sure, well into the night because their man, Leslie Stewart, at the age of 26, has avenged his only loss and he has won for himself and for this Caribbean island nation, the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Officially, a ninth round TKO, the referee stopping the fight at the end of round eight as he defeats Marvin Johnson. And these days, of course, adjectives like courageous and gutty are ridiculously overused, but you have to save them for times like this and to describe people like Marvin Johnson and the way he performed today. And he is with Alex Wallow in his dressing room. Alex. Thank you, Al. Marvin, it seemed like he caught you right in the first 30 seconds of the fight and you're just never able to get back into it. Is that accurate? I'd say that's probably pretty close. Uh, I thank God Almighty for not letting me get hurt any more than what I did. But I think if uh, if the fight had went to the third round and it caught me in the third round, I wouldn't have been able to get back either. Marvin, you always said that you wouldn't kid yourself that you'd know when the end was, was at hand. Is this the last fight of your career? It's very, very possible. Uh, and I, the only reason I don't say definite is because I haven't talked to my trainer, which I will do as soon as we get home. But uh, it's very likely that ABC televised my first world championship and now my last. I want to congratulate the new champion. Unlike he did me, he criticized me when he won the championship. He said I hit him with illegal blows. I headbutted him. But I'm not going to say that about him. I'm going to say he's a very good fighter. He won the fight on skill, and I congratulate him and hope him a lot of success. Marvin, congratulations on your class and the guts that you showed. Permit me to say that you never ducked anybody. You always fought the best, and you always gave everything you had. And if this is the end, you have a, a career, a great career to be proud of. 
Let's go back to Al Michaels at ringside. Thank you, Alex. Well, maybe it is over for Marvin Johnson. He has held the light heavyweight championship, at least a light heavyweight championship, on three separate occasions. But the new champion, at least of the WBA, is Leslie Stewart at the age of 26 out of Port of Spain, Trinidad. And so from here to New York, and once more...